because we're going to talk about what um, what are some options after progression on endocrine therapy and a CDK4-6 inhibitor. Um, so if those fail you or when they do, wh what, what do you do? And so just keep in mind, those are Ibrands, Cascali, and Versenio. Yeah, next slide. Thank you. Um, so the first thing you should do is get a biopsy um, to check for mutations. And this could be a liquid biopsy. So an example of a liquid biopsy would be garden. So um, where they're going to look at DNA from tumors that's floating around in your blood, and they'll look for specific mutations. So that's known as a liquid biopsy. A tissue biopsy would be where they go in with a needle or maybe go in during surgery to take an actual little piece of the tumor. Either way, can look for mutations that are in your specific tumors. So that's number one. The next slide is going to look at, and there's a lot going on here, um, what, what then? So there are several mutations now that are indicated for treatments. So one, so we're gonna start kind of on the left-hand side of the slide, if you can see those, is a PIK3CA mutation. Um, and so if you have this and you've had progression on a CDK4-6 inhibitor and a and, um, hormonal therapy, PICRE plus Fazlodex it would be a, a good drug. Additionally, there's a new drug that was just FDA approved in the last year called TrueCap. So TrueCap plus Fazlodex is another option. Um, if you have AKT or P10 mutations, TrueCap plus Fazlodex is also an option. Um, if you have an ESR, if you're a cancer, I keep saying you, and it really should be your cancer, has an ESR1 mutation, then Orcerdo or, or Elicestron, so um, would be an option. So you'll see there are, and we just listed through three drugs that you have to, that your cancer has to have a mutation in for you to be eligible for. And that's why it's so important um, to look for those mutations with a liquid biopsy or a tissue biopsy. Now, if you don't have mutations, fine, this was me, uh, currently still me, um, there's options. So one of those would be Affinitor plus Fazlodex. Um, if you're on a first line uh, eye branch, you might consider switching to Kiskali plus Fazlodex. Um, if there's slow or mild progression, maybe just, a, now progression's progression, it's always scary. I just want to throw that out there right now. Um, but if it's slow or there's not a lot, it may be worthwhile to um, do treatment beyond progression, kind of watch and wait and see what happens. Um, however, if there's aggressive progression, chemotherapy or antibody drug conjugates, which we'll talk a little bit more about, would probably be indicated. Again, right, we're not oncologists, but this was from a really great session on what are the options after um, like Ibrance for Seniochus Cali. Finally, um, if you have an inherited, sometimes, sometimes called a germline mutation, so these are ones you inherited from your parents um, and you could pass on to your children, um, in BRCA1-2 or a PAL mutation, a PARP inhibitor such as Linparza um, might be indicated. Now, of course, as Amy so rightly pointed out, um, all decisions are our own um, and in consultation with our oncologist, but ultimately our own. And it's really important to consider toxicities, right, of these drugs. They all have different toxicities um, and also any comorbidities that you might have. All right, next slide, please. I just wanted so, to jump in and say that yeah. at this particular session, which was basically treatment decisions after CDK4-6 inhibitors, Dr. Stephanie Graff, who was the moderator of that session, literally said, I consider this area to be a mess. And so that's if that slide looked really complicated and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is a little crazy, um, realize that your doctors are also looking at this being something that isn't quite Nothing, that ever, nothing is ever set in stone, but doctors like flowcharts and doctors like this is what I do first and this is what I do second and having some kind of, um, you know, being able to anticipate what might happen next. So I think this is an area where we're going to see a lot more research and a lot more information coming soon. So if you are, if the cancer in your body, thank you for the reminder, Amy, it's not, not you, it's the cancer in your body. Um, if the cancer in your body is hormone positive, HER2 negative, or potentially HER2 low, like I think that's kind of what we're talking about right now, um, which is the majority of people living with breast cancer, um, a lot more to come. So just wanted to say, if it feels a little overwhelming, Dr. Graff was say, basically said publicly multiple times, 
this, she felt like this is a little bit of overwhelming right now and, and a lot more to come. So just wanted to jump in and say that. That's such a great point. Thank you. Yeah, it is. There is a lot coming down. I feel like maybe every week we're seeing a new paper on like what you should do first, what you should do second and under what circumstances. So it really, there is no consensus. Um, so there, there's a lot of gray here. Thank you. Such a good point. Um, number two, always consider a clinical trial. Remember, clinical trials are not just a last resort. There are clinical trials available at all parts of your journey. Um, so that's that's a really great point too. And thanks to Kelly Shanahan, she did a lot of these slides. All right. 